So let's look now at a slightly different way of setting up a flip fluid and that's to use the flip tank tool. So let me control click and we'll add one of those and what we see is a box, the purple box, which is already filled with liquid. And this is not so different in fact from the earlier method of sourcing a fluid from a single object, not emitting from the object but just sourcing from it. And indeed the shelf tool sets up this this thing called a fluid tank initial uh, which if we were to visualize it we would see is a set of particles occupying the space that we want our liquid to occupy and then in the auto dot network uh, we get this flip tank object now in fact this is just a standard flip object it's just been called flip tank the difference is that it's using a SOP path, those particles that we just saw, as a particle field from which to generate your fluid. The other difference is the boundaries of this box are closed. So what will happen by default is that every the, the, the liquid will bounce off the sides of this box except for in the positive y direction. So if you had a very big splash that shot up the top here, then it might not stay within the box. Now, let's demonstrate that it really is a liquid by creating a sphere, and I'm going to make that into a rigid body object, and to make it a little bit more dramatic, um, let's give it some downward initial velocity like so and what we should see now this shoots down and into the water and produces this splash well let's examine now a couple of things which are also new in Houdini 12 uh, which are to do with the flip solver itself. So let me put down a ground plane, put down a sphere, and let's make the sphere into a flip fluid. And when we do that, and we press play, what we'll see is the fluid will fall down and then it will splash out like so. Uh, and if we have a look at uh, auto dot network what I want to just illustrate is here on the flip solver that we have a new tab here called reseeding and reseeding increases the number of particles in your fluid simulation if the particles become too thinly spread. So for example, in this default setup, the voxel grid, that's the grid that's being used to produce the field part of the simulation, is expecting to find eight particles in each voxel. And if it finds less than that, uh, then it'll start adding some. And if it finds many more than that, it'll start taking some away. So we can see that this is happening because if we have a look here at our fluid, we can see that at the beginning there are 4,000 points. And if we let it run for a bit, we've then got 5,980 points. If I turn off the reseeding, like so, then we should find that at the beginning we have 4,175 points and then even as it splashes down and spreads out we should see that we've got exactly the same number of points as before. So you may ask, well, when do you want to use this reseeding capability? Well, if you've got a very turbulent uh, simulation and you want to try and preserve some of the sort of 
energy of that reaction, then it can be useful to have reseeding. And in particular, if you're on a container where there's a danger of the liquid sort of separating from the walls of the container, then it can be good to have reseeding on. Where reseeding is fatal is where you're using something like uh, the technique I used in the fluid transformation tutorial to assign each of the particles in the fluid to a destination goal particle. And there, of course, you need the number of particles in the fluid to remain constant so that they can move towards the goal. So for those kind of things, you definitely want to turn reseeding off. Well, another thing that's new and very exciting in Houdini 12 is viscous fluids. So let me set one up. So to start with, let's lay down a ground plane, something for it to land on. We'll just have a simple sphere as our emitter. Let's move it up. And let me convert that into a fluid emitter. And then press enter to create a new fluid. And there we are. We now have a fluid emitter. So when we press play, that's going to start emitting fluid, which is going to fall down. And eventually it's going to hit the floor here and spread out, which it does really fast. I can make uh, this fluid viscous. In fact, I'm going to move it down so that it's much closer to the floor so we don't have to wait so long and I'm going to turn off display of the f of the sphere object and the other thing I, I'm going to do because I think it, it looks better it's easier to see is on the flip fluid object I'm going to change the guides for the particles to be particles so uh, in order to make my fluid, the easiest way really to make my fluid viscous is to use the make viscous tool up here. So with nothing selected, select make viscous, select some fl fluid that you want to make viscous and press enter. And it reminds you that you control the viscosity of your fluid in two different ways and I'm going to demonstrate both ways. So let's do that and we should now see that things haven't changed that much and the reason they haven't changed that much of course is because the default viscosity is not very thick so if I go along to my flip fluid object I can set my viscosity here on the physical tab and this slider is a logarithmic scale uh, which means that it starts with small values and then as you move along it the, the increment increases and increases. So let's give it a sort of medium viscosity of say about 500 uh, and then we can play and what we should see is that when this hits the ground it's going to produce a much slower you can see gloopy sort of expansion as it hits the ground. So there's some viscosity. You can also set your viscosity using a point attribute on your particles. So uh, let's do that and the create surface volume node on the particles tab actually has an easy way to do this. You, you could just use an attribute create to do it uh, but let's just select viscosity and I'm going to put this at a value say of 2. Now what this means uh, is that this is going to have a viscosity attribute on every particle and we can see it here viscosity attribute of 2 and we can take that into account in our simulation but we do need to set up a couple of things in order to do so. And we need to, on the flip solver here, we'll see on the particle motion tab, I think it is, no, sorry, it's on the volume motion tab, uh, there's a sub-tab for viscosity. And we must make sure that viscosity is enabled 
Here this viscosity by attribute is enabled and we must make sure that the mix method of multiply is enabled. You could use copy. Uh, copy will just copy the value on each point onto the to the simulation to be the viscosity. The multiply means that you're in effect multiplying the value on the points or the particles by the value that you've set here. So what we should see is this is even more gloopy and solid because it's now in effect got a viscosity of 1000. And we can see that is quite a bit thicker. The great thing about this is that we can actually have two different uh, viscosities. So let me lay down another source or another sphere and I'm going to move it let's just move it a little bit off to the side here that should do okay and um, let's emit from that and then it's inviting us to select the fluid so in this case we do want to emit those particles into an existing fluid so I just select my fluid and press enter and this has now created another fluid emitter and in this case we could enable viscosity and give it a value of 0.5 or even 0.1 so when this is multiplied through it's going to give a much less viscous fluid and the other thing I think I'm going to do is just give our fluids a different color so let me lay down a point swap and let's add color delete the channels and let's make this one red and then the other one which is the first sphere let's give it a color which is blue so what we should now see if we go into our auto dot network and lay it out and on the fluid object make sure on the guides that we're not visualizing anything then we can see our two colors and what we should see is that the red fluid flows down much more quickly than the blue one and we can see that at the bottom it spreads out much much more quickly so it's really quite easy to create a simulation where you combine two different levels of viscosity and the simulator the solver works pretty well and gets pretty accurate results for that. Well in rather a similar way to the example we've just seen with mixed different values of viscosity you can set up a flip fluid simulation where the two fluids involved have different densities. So if we have a look uh, inside our auto dot network here we can see on the flip solver right next to the viscosity tab we have this density by attribute control and that allows us to take an attribute by default called density from the particles that we're sourcing and multiply it by this scale here so obviously I need to set up on each of our different sources a density attribute and I've got two different uh, methods of sourcing here one is the flip tank which we saw earlier and if we have a look at this on the flip tank node right at the bottom we can see we have the ability to set density and then here on our sphere source on the create surface volume node uh, under the particles tab we can see we also have the ability to set density now at the moment uh, they're both set to one so in fact I'm um, let's uh, visualize this 
in the Auto Dot Network itself. So if I hit play, we can see one fluid just falls into the other and kind of mixes together. It is actually falling to the bottom here. Uh, but what happens if one fluid is lighter than the other? So in this case, I've set up a take, uh, which is setting the value on my sphere source, and it's setting it to 0.5. So in this case, it's lighter than the fluid in the tank. And this we should see now. If we go into our Autodot network and press play, what we should see, and there we are, we can see it, is that the lighter fluid is floating on top of the heavier fluid, like so. And similarly, I've got a, a heavier take here. Uh, and This is setting the, the sphere to have heavier weight than the rest. And we can see it, it's falling more rapidly and it's spreading uniformly really across the bottom of the tank, as a heavier fluid would do. Now, you might want, uh, when you come to render these two fluids, or, or any fluid where there's a variation uh, in the viscosity or the density, you might want to render them as two different surfaces. And you can do that uh, here in the flip tank fluid node. Uh, and what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to do it here. And what I'm going to do is use a delete node. And we want to, I mean, a take. Let's go back to the main take. So I want to delete points by expression. And let me just see what variables are coming through here. Density is coming through. So we can use. I think dollar density. And we can say for dollar density is greater than 0 0.6. So that's going to be, and that should give us, let's just see, deep detected points. Let's just have a look at this, make sure that. Uh, we're getting density correct. Density is one there. Some cases it's two. Uh, okay, so it's one or two. So let me, in this case, density is greater than 1.5. And that's going to delete all of the points that are heavy. And then if I control C, control V this, this is going to, if I say delete non-selected, be all the other points. And then I can just create a particle fluid surface here and a particle fluid surface there by cutting and pasting. And then perhaps merge the two together. Uh, and one of the things I can do, in fact, on both of these nodes is on the Attributes tab, ensure that we are picking up color as well as everything else. So what we should see, there we are, is our two fluids rendered entirely separately. So if I have a look at this, we can see it's just, and something's going on there with those nodes at the top. We'll have a look in a second. Uh, and this one, is just going to be the bottom fluid. And of course the the problem was related to the fact that I was in the, in the main take uh, when I was simulating this. So actually all of the particles had the same density in the main take. So I need to re-simulate it using one of these. And I'll just do that. And what we should now see as this simulates through and just leave it for a few more frames so that we get some of the fluid spreading out perhaps towards the bottom. There we are. 
So let's stop it there. And what we should now see is that that fluid and that fluid are indeed entirely separate. And perhaps uh, skipping about a bit, but I was going to demonstrate now how to emit uh, a flip fluid using a texture. So I'm going to use a tube as my source here. And let's make it a polygon. And let's give it, say, 20 and a few more, 10 of those. And let's increase the height to 2. And this is going to be our source. So I can use emit particles from object here to create a flip fluid. And press enter twice. And that creates a flip fluid, and it's going to be quite dull. It's just going to emit from there and fall down. So what I want instead is to emit from a image texture that I'm going to apply to the tube. So let me insert some nodes here before the create surface volume node. And the first one, perhaps, I'm going to create is a point sob because I'm going to create some point normals for our tube. And let me turn off visualization of everything else so that we can just see our tube. And we should now have some point normals. There we are. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is a UV project. So let's get some UVs on this. And let's use cylindrical projection. And then I'm going to scatter some points here. In fact, uh, before I do that, let's just move those up. Let me lay down a UV quick shade node so that we can apply a texture to this. And the texture I'm going to apply is, let's say, one of these butterfly pictures that comes with Houdini. And we can see it quite clearly. Um, and what we want to do is emit a fluid from this texture, from the cylinder, uh, but using the texture and using the colors from the texture. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, I'm going to scatter some points onto this. And when we do that, we can see that the scatter points have picked up the attributes that are already there, the normal and the UV. And that means that I can use a delete sob, and I can delete the selected points, and I can delete using an expression. And the expression I'm going to use uses the text function, and this looks up a texture map. And let's just, I think it's HFS Houdini pick. In fact, uh, why don't I cut and paste this? So let's have a look at my click quick shade. And I can select all of this, Control C. and control V into here. So the text function takes a file. It takes some texture coordinates. And because we've used that UV project earlier, we've got those. And they're stored in these various dollar map U, dollar map V. And then we need a color component. And that, for this function, can either be R, G, or B for red, green, or blue. Or if we want the luminance, we can use L. So let me use L. And for those points that have a luminance greater than 0.1, uh, we're going to delete them. And that's in fact the, the sort of negative of the image we want because we want the butterflies, so let's delete non-selected. And there we're just left with points uh, which are inside that butterfly image. So what happens when got uh, an extra scatter there that I don't need. What happens uh, when we then go to the Create Surface node? 
uh, and we can see we can get nothing. We get nothing, and that's because by default this is building SDF from geometry, whereas what we want is stamp points. And now we can see we get this this surface here, which is more or less uh, representing the butterfly. Uh, and we can uh, change the the way stamp points works on this tab here. For example, we could reduce this sample distance down, and that'll make the image a bit tighter, or we can increase it and it'll it'll get bigger. So the next thing I want to do uh, is to perhaps inherit the velocity uh, by using the normal. In other words, I want to force the fluid outwards in the direction of the normals. And I can do that here on the velocity tab uh, by instead of putting the source attribute of V, let's put a source attribute of N. And that should pick up the velocity from the normals here. And let's give it a scale of, say, 2. And what we should find uh, is that, let's go into this auto.network and lay it out. And I'm going to just change the guides here. So on the particles tab, let's actually have it display particles. And I'm going to turn off the visualization, put it to none. And what we should see is our fluid emitting from the texture there and falling away. So the next thing I want to do is to give those uh, initial that initial fluid some color based on the texture. Well, to do that, I'm going to go back uh, to my tube object, which is my source. And I'm going to, after this delete node here, add a point sop. And the point sop is going to add color. So let's put add color delete those channels which come by default and in fact I want more or less the same expression that I was using here so let's just use that text expression didn't work so we need text map u map v l control c to copy that and then I'm just going to put that into here but instead of L I want R which is going to get me the red component and then I can copy this and I can paste copied expressions here and here and then make that a G and make that a B so that should be picking up the color from the image. Let's just have a look at that. And we can see, indeed, it is. We can see those colors of the butterfly reflected in those points. Now, when we go through the create surface volume here, uh, we see that, uh, let me turn off the visualization of the surface which, so we can see our points. Uh, and let me also turn off the visualization of velocity. We can see that all of these points are white. They're not picking up a color attribute. Uh, there's no color attribute defined there and we can't use this here to to pick up that color attribute so what we need to do is an attribute transfer so let me day down an attribute transfer node like so now if you remember those points here are in uh, a primitive whose name is particles so we're going to transfer to the primitive whose name, at name equals particles, will give us just that, just that, just those points to transfer to. So this is the thing we're going to transfer to, and then we're going to transfer from these points with color on them here. So what that should do is transfer the color so delete that and change this to color and what we should find is that that is that should be transferring color to there
and why is that not working? And uh, the reason it's not working is because I've misspelt, mistyped name here, so at name, and that should now transfer the color properly. There we are, and we can see the color transferred, and that should mean uh, that when we go into our auto dot network, we get a fluid which is colored according to the colors of the image.